All right, so here we're going to do our sheet by dissection. So we can see our sheet by here. First thing we want to do is find the optic nerve. So if I feel right there, there's the optic nerve coming out of the back. Here's our cornea in the front, okay? So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to basically trim around without cutting off that optic nerve there, okay? Now the layer here being the sclera, the white of your eye is the sclera, okay? The sclera is actually pretty hard to get through, okay? The outer thin membrane is the conjunctiva and then just underneath the conjunctiva then, that sclera is very difficult to get through so I'm able to trim the eyeball pretty well here without cutting through anything, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull some stuff away from this optic nerve because I want to make sure that I get right around that optic nerve when I dissect it. Okay, and we'll trim around that optic nerve, make sure that we trim it really well so that we get everything off of there and around there. All right, move this stuff all out of the way because it's icky and then well, look at this. So here's our optic nerve. Here is our cornea in the front. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is bisect this into an anterior and posterior portion, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my thumb and my finger, put it right on the cornea there, take my scalpel and push down inside there. Okay, you can see some fluid coming out. Then we're going to kind of work our way around this carefully with the scalpel. And sometimes you can actually use scissors for this. All right, scissors work well for this step, but scalpel will give me a teeny bit cleaner cut so that when I finish this cut, we'll be able to see things a little bit better. I'll go over here. Mm -mm. I want to just kind of finish that cut there. And sclera is tough, so you can always feel that sclera. So now we're going to go ahead and open this up and look inside. Okay, although I'm going to take it a little bit more with my scissors through that sclera there. Okay, so now we can open this up and we can see then what we have back here kind of looks a little like an egg. That is our lens. If I pull all of that out, I kind of drip all of that out. Then we have all this jelly attached around that lens. This jelly is the vitreous humor. So it's jelly-like fluid inside that basically is designed to hold everything in place. Okay. Up here then we have our cornea. Inside there, that hole right there is the pupil. Okay, on this side around that hole is the iris. And then if we kind of dig down right around the edges there, you can see that big bump there, that's the ciliary body. The ciliary body then was attached to um, suspensory ligaments then that were holding the eye. So now let's go ahead and we'll extract our lens from the vitreous humor. So that vitreous humor is very much jelly-like. And the reason the vitreous humor is there is because the vitreous humor holds the eye in place. So down there in the back is the retina. Okay, that retina is a really thin sheet and we have it in, it's really in good shape right now. We'll look at that here in a minute. Let's talk about the lens first. So here's our lens. This lens is really hard, it's opaque. Typically that lens will be translucent where you can see right through it, okay? And it's going to be a lot softer. So through the preservation then, it's basically become opaque. And so the way that eyes focus is through what's called accommodation. So our suspensory ligaments pull on the eyes, stretch that lens out so the lens gets smaller and thicker, right? So that's 
you know, it's a good system, but the problem is, is that as you age, you put layers and layers upon that lens. In fact, you can go in and you can look at all of the layers um, on lenses from year to year. Okay. As people get older, then the lens becomes less um, able to stretch and to bend. And because of that, then when people get older, they are pretty much guaranteed that they're going to need reading glasses because it doesn't bend enough and it's not malleable enough as they get old and those layers get on. Okay. Now, um, octopi and mollusks have a different system. So in their system, it works more like a camera that focuses in and out where the lens moves in and out. So an octopus is never going to need glasses, whereas people need glasses. All right, let's look back here then in the back of the eye. So there's a really thin layer that's very, very delicate back here. This is the retina. And so you'll notice I can pull off that retina very gently there. So see how that retina comes off? Okay. And so retina, of course, you know, retinal problems are probably the leading cause of blindness in people. Detached retina is very common where you just basically get that retina detached from the choroid. The layer underneath that retina then is the choroid. And this is an interesting choroid. Usually this choroid on most sheep is really bright blue. This is actually black over here, black over here. We have a little bit of blue here and then this is shiny right here. Normally this blue, translucent blue, is what's in most sheep eyes, but of course you have variation between different sheep. Okay. Um, if we look at the retina then, we can see the retina is still holding on there. That is the, where the optic nerve attaches to the retina right there, and that's where the blind spot is. Okay. This blue then, as I mentioned back there, is called the tapetum lucidum. The tapetum lucidum then is for night vision. It's an adaptation for nocturnal organisms. Okay. People, we don't have a tapetum lucidum. And in us, think about it, what do we have instead of a tapetum lucidum? And so think about photographs. When you take a person's photograph, what shines back? And it's red eye. So this choroid is actually your blood layer. And that blood layer then um, of the choroid then is what we see when we take pictures is blood shining black and that's back and that's why you have red eye. When you then drive around at nighttime, you see deer. Deer basically have this tapetum lucidum in the back. Okay. Then the... Um, you know, the retina that we looked at before, that's where your rods and cones are. And so here is our retina, our rods and cones face back against that choroid. The choroid supplies blood to the retina. The retina doesn't have any blood layers in there. So another problem is when you get a pucker, right, you get a little bit of fluid built up between your retina and your choroid, you end up with scarring because there is no blood getting to that tissue. That tissue ends up scarring and dying, okay? All right, so another problem, is macular degeneration. And macular degeneration happens when late in life um, older people start to get what's called neovascularization in the fovea and the macula. The macula is where life light focuses. Okay. And so basically that's the focal point. And if you get vascularization in there, the weird part about us is that light comes in, it bounces off of that um, choroid and bounces back to our rods and cones because our rods and cones are facing your choroid in there. So if it goes in, you have neovascularization and they bounce all over the place, then that causes problems in the macula and then you're, you get that macula, macular degeneration and you can't see anything. Okay? Really nothing you can do about that macular degeneration for older people. So lenses, right, as I mentioned, the lenses are hard. This lens, right, is opaque. So people who get, um, who get cataracts, cataracts is basically when you get protein deposits on that lens. The lens becomes hard to see through again, right? It's like a dirty windshield or a dirty pair of glasses. And basically light scatters. The way that they fix that is they basically just go in, cut open the cornea, take out the lens, and put in a, a fake lens that doesn't have the ability to accommodate in there. Okay. LASIK then really only reshapes the cornea. So it's reshaping the cornea so that that cornea then can focus down on the back of the eye. Finally then, glaucoma is another real common ailment that you get checked for all the time. Glaucoma occurs when there's usually a drain at the side of the eye. So, Fluid is produced inside here, right? 
If you pump too much fluid and it doesn't drain very well, then pressure builds up from too much fluid in the eye. When that pressure builds up, then that's going to push back on your optic nerve and glaucoma then can cause tunnel vision and blindness because of that pressure pushing back on the optic nerve. Okay.